What's up, friends? Like we said, today we're talking all about an AI that can read human emotions better than most people can. Um, And I think that's just a really interesting challenge to talk about in terms of human society as a whole and how we're interacting with AI, Um, but especially in the context of this, the research that we're talking about today was being completed inside the realm of athletics. So it's like knowing and understanding athletes' feelings during the game, understanding interactions between players and the other people on their team, um, and also understanding whether athletes are experiencing burnout. So it's a really interesting challenge where currently even humans don't have a great understanding of how other humans are feeling. They, they talked about like tennis players during a tennis match. It's really hard to tell that 100% of the time. Um, and so they're creating an AI that can read the human emotions during sports better than any human can. And because sports are such fast, unpredictable environments, they've got this thesis that maybe if they get good at human observations in the sports realm, they can apply them to other realms of human emotion as well. Yeah. And I I think one thing that was really interesting to me was I assume there's, you know, some sort of a AI model or data set out there for human emotions that you could train on or you could build off of. But these folks were like, no, we're actually just going to focus on tennis players, gather all of our data from that, and then build our model based off of that data. And for a second, I was like, that doesn't really make sense because your data set's obviously going to be a little bit smaller. But then I thought, well, you know, from like, from sport to sport, from engagement to engagement, humans show their emotions differently. Like what might be the norm in hockey to show your appreciation by like slapping someone's head or like what might be the satisfaction by like pushing them through a board um, that doesn't necessarily apply to, you know, the emotions that you might be showing in tennis where it's subtle, where maybe even the same thing in golf where it's like a much more gentler sport. So it makes more sense that you kind of hone in your data set to the application that you're going after. Um, And yeah, I I thought it was really interesting. They studied these 15 tennis players and they were like, okay, so... um, data uh, that the set went well now they're pumping the air so like that means they're happy or they just missed their shot and now they look a little bit frustrated or like um you know their eyes narrow a little bit and that's the nuance that this model was really looking for well and it also makes me think back to episode 93 we talked about how ai could predict sports really really well and In i think hockey. i think they started they they did hockey and also volleyball right? yes is that true i think and, so and when they were first training they used volleyball because there were set spurts of like, oh, they're going to play for like usually 30 seconds of volleying back and forth and someone's going to score. And they were able to use that to train this model to understand how sports players interact with each other and understand the next possible outcome. And this AI from episode 93, which we can link or you can check it out on our show and to hear more about AI and sports if you're interested, that model got really, really good at predicting the next outcome in sports based off of using volleyball as the training set and then it went on to be able to predict hockey really really well um and similarly here i feel like tennis is kind of similar to volleyball in that there's like set short spurts of volleys where it's like you you can gather hundreds or thousands of like 30 second clips of sports um and not deal with a lot of the other interference that you might get in like other sports where um there's players hitting each other and then there's players subbing in and out off the bench like none of those x factors happen in tennis or in volleyball which i think make them prime uh that's a really good footages for for training and i don't think that's that's not something that was explicitly mentioned but i'm wondering if that was one of the part of the calculus here to say um you know not only are we interested in using tennis as our training ground so to speak to get this ai really really good at understanding how players' interactions change when they win or lose points to help understand whether they're happy or not or they're burnt out or not or they're upset or not. Um, I wonder if also tennis was strategically chosen because of the way that the game is structured allows there for be a lot of like really structured training data that is pretty compatible with the way that you would train a convolutional neural network for AI. Yeah, no, that's that's a very good point. I didn't even consider that. Um, but I, I guess one of the things I, that I was wondering as a not so big of a sports fan was why do you care that much about the emotions of players and one thing they noted is as a coach um, you could actually just analyze data in real time or after the fact to see how your players are doing and see what the team dynamics are right or even like start picking up um, elements of burnout showing early on which is wonderful and then I guess on the consumer side of sports um if you're the type that is really passionate about your team or maybe you're into sports betting, um, you could use a tool like this to understand how you know a player or a team is doing. 
And th- those are some of the direct impacts it could have on sports performance overall. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. So they, they just to kind of talk specifically about the methodology mm-hmm. they used here, their, their secret sauce to achieve this, um, they made this AI model that looks specifically at body language of tennis players. They recorded 15 tennis players in a bunch of different matches. They watched specifically how these players moved their body language as well as their faces when they won or lost points. They categorized those, whether they were lowering their head or raising their arms or giving each other high fives, etc. They used a convolutional neural network. Um, this It's a type of neural network, a type of deep learning AI model that's really good at finding patterns in pictures and videos. So they use these videos, they've categorized them, whether the points were won or lost, and then they ask these convolutional neural networks to train on these videos and try and understand what patterns exist in the human body language and in the facial language between winning points, losing points, and trying to categorize whether the player was happy or was sad or angry or upset um, during each play. And this accuracy of the AI model, it was right about 69% of the time, 68.9% of the time, which is interesting. Um, in my mind, I was like, oh, that's pretty low for an AI. That's what I thought too. AI model. Usually when we're sitting here looking at like AI accuracy for things like uh, doing early detection of cancer based off of scans, we're looking at like 99.999% accuracy. AI is way better than humans, et cetera. But humans are only about 68, 69% good at detecting the correct emotion on other people during a sports game. So they said, you know, this AI model was about the same as humans were and in some cases a little better than humans are at detecting emotions on other players um which is pretty pretty interesting because it shows the challenge that humans have and the friction that humans have in understanding each other's emotions i much i imagine that's a much more challenging problem for ai and computers to be able to understand human emotions given that there's so much gray space there i agree and another finding that was interesting that kind of extends your point is that um both humans and the AI were much better at detecting negative emotions than positive ones. And the the paper had a quick note as to why that might be the case. And they're like, oh, like as we evolved, it might've been more advantageous to like display negative emotions to like ward, you know, people off or like threats off or display your dismay at something. Whereas positive emotions, there's like no reward value for like really sharing that, which is why we might be bad at kind of expressing positive emotions well and anecdotally right (laughs) i think it's really really easy to tell if someone's pissed off yeah if someone hates you you know (laughs) usually Um, if someone's angry about you or they're you know coming at you with a knife on the street like your body deep down interpret that to your fight or flight response your body to the core understands exactly that someone else is angry at you yeah it's challenging sometimes to tell if someone's happy with you. If they truly like you, right? I, I don't, again, like maybe it's some way ingrained in human nature or the way that we all express our happy emotions are different. There's a little bit more friction there, but I absolutely, just completely anecdotally, could understand that it's easier for humans to understand when someone else is mad. And I guess that might translate to understanding, or for computers to understand when humans are mad, given that there's probably some... Limited cues just to show that. Yeah, some really strong trends and patterns from human to human yeah. on how we express anger versus a variety in different ways that we express, you know, whether we're happy or excited about something. I guess not to make this a therapy podcast, but folks, get get better at expressing uh, ha- your happiness and, I don't know, showing it to other people. Yeah, maybe. It could help the AIs. Yeah, but I, I, again, I, I just think this is really interesting from a technical perspective. They're able to use a training data from sports. Sports is largely because of all the different X factors of people moving around. Um, You know, there being fast movements, lots of changes during games. Sports are actually a relatively challenging training method for for a convolutional neural network like AI to understand. I'm glad they're able to find tennis, which seems to be framed in a way that allows this network to be successful at understanding different emotions and movements. Um, and the, so what here, right? Athletes can better understand their own feelings to better understand their own game, their own teamwork can help coaches understand where there's issues with chemistry can help stop burnout. Um, and interestingly, usually people can watch and try and guess emotions, but we're only just about as good as this computer is. So I wonder if there's some headroom here for computers to get even better at detecting emotions in the athletic field as well. Yeah, definitely. And I, I guess you mentioned it early on, you know, this is kind of the starting point for um, AIs doing human emotion detection. 
it, it made me think um if you were to scale this type of technology how would it fare um as you start looping in you know different cultural aspects different ethnicities you know i think about myself an iranian man i'm quite animated you know i use my hands a lot as i'm like expressing myself i'm wondering if an ai could like kind of pick up the nuance uh, you know he's probably not super excited he's just normal and iranian and that's why he's doing <laughs> what he's doing you know no. or like if, if you're like uh, i don't know maybe you're, you're from a culture where like uh being loud and like your facial features changing is actually like a term of endearment somehow and now the ai is thinking you're upset i wonder if those nuances can be you know caught no i agree i, th- I think it's one of the next steps that this team should take and a lot of folks using AI is trying to diversify their training set as much as possible. So in this case, I'd love for them to diversify their training set in terms of which sports they use, in terms of which training footage they use. Maybe at some point, and I think it was mentioned as a potential future work is like using this a customer service setting Mm -hmm. to understand if the customer service employee is actually appropriately resolving this person's problem, the customer. I think that's an awesome application of this, but um, in addition to varying the different fields, right? I agree. You need to vary the different cultures because culturally speaking, there's a bunch of different um, ways in which people express emotion. their emotion, whether that be excitement or discontent. Um, I can just as easily imagine there are personality differences as well Correct. as cultural differences. Um, I know, for instance, my wife, Nellie, if she were upset about like someone sending the wrong salad to her at a restaurant, she would just like get quiet and she's non-confrontational. She'll get quiet about it. Meanwhile, like there's enough people in the world that if that happened to them, they'd like flip the plate and yell at the waiter, right? There, there's a spectrum, you know, even within cultures, just based on personality on how people interact and react differently to things. I think that's why this AI model is only 70% accurate as is. And I think if they're able to train it on a wider variety of different people different emotions different cultures different arenas and in this case arenas being both sports and outside of sports they'll be able to create a model that interestingly enough ai might get better at detecting human emotions than humans are hands down yeah no that's a great point my last thing that i wanted to touch on um one thing i would be interested in in terms of application is there's all this tech being used for professional drivers, think like truckers or other folks who drive a lot for work that have like uh, speedometers to make sure that they're not speeding too much and um, you know GPS to make sure they're going the right routes or whatever, make, j- just maximizing how well they're performing as drivers. Um, one thing that I think could, could be interesting, a lot of these have cameras now looking at the driver to make sure they're not falling asleep. Imagine analyzing them in real time to make sure that they don't have road rage. And if they do, be like, hey, calm down or we're gonna like dude that's know. that's awful big brother of you there. i know i know but like i don't know i guess i got beef with road ridge drivers and i'm like huh it would be nice to have that extra layer of safety that says hey you're upset right now how about we calm down we take slow a, down the take car a deep breath. yeah because you know you could kill a lot of people with this big car that, or this truck that you're like hauling around yeah dude i don't know that, that's an interesting application it's, it's definitely on the border of like um you know pushing too much into people's lives but no, i agree and just to mention there's another portion of this that they that they mentioned which is as in using humans for ai and allowing ai to understand humans potentially better than humans can there's a lot of ethical considerations as well they talked about making sure that people's privacy is safe that data isn't being used exactly. wrongly um the study was very important to make sure that the people who were used as the training set what they were protected from a privacy perspective but then also they said before we push too far with this technology let's collectively agree as a society what the rules should be what's the fence we're going to put around the sandbox that we allow ai to play in um so that we don't just start to understand emotions and sports better and then ai takes over the world because it can (laughs) understand humans way better than we can so um just an interesting application here where they're they're playing at the realm of this ai after their first whack at it is already just about as good as humans um if they get to a point where humans can read AI or AI can read human emotions way better than humans can. I, I don't know. It could, could be an interesting future where I feel like men are pretty like historically awful, like reading each other's emotions. There's all these memes. I think I sent one to you where it's like, <laughs> Oh, like dudes could be going through like the best time of their life or the worst time of their life. And they always just respond like, Oh, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> like, I, I feel like maybe we get to a point where like 
when we're going going out with the guys from college, we all wear these AI glasses that tell us if we're actually happy or not. Yeah, yeah. Let them do the heavy lifting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then men don't have to communicate <laughs> yeah. their emotions. That's the uh-huh. product right there. That's the end game. Yeah. Want to wrap it up? Yeah. So interestingly, we've got this challenge, these folks that are trying to create an AI that can read human, human emotions better than any person can. Um, and it's interesting, they're doing this in the arena of sports. So it's really challenging to recognize emotions already on humans, and especially computers have this challenge. But in fast, unpredictable sports environments, it gets even harder to observe humans and understand exactly what their emotions are. But these researchers trained using tennis as a training data, a convolutional neural network to study real game videos. Um, These neural networks worked by finding patterns in the images and then in the videos and through multiple layers of analysis, it was able to achieve about 69% accuracy at understanding what the human's emotions were during the sports clip. Um, They think that this AI could help improve sports training and performance, but could also be used in other areas like healthcare and customer service. But they're also looking at the ethical considerations to make sure that we don't let AI take over the world because it already understands human emotions about as good as humans can, and it's going to get even better. Money. All right, folks, thank you so much for listening. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.